Well, good morning, Monticello. It's wonderful to be here. I'm Pastor Ralph from Community United Methodist Church, and I am thrilled to be worshiping God alongside you. Amen? Amen. I'd like to take a moment to thank our local ministerium for inviting me to speak this morning. I'm the new guy, right? So you know how that goes. I drew the short straw. <laughs> well, not quite. Your local pastors were gracious, and they invited me to share this morning. So thank you, pastors, for this opportunity. I'm incredibly grateful and honored for the chance. Now, some of you are probably wondering, who am I? So let me share a bit about me, who I am, just a little bit. And before I met Jesus, I was the guy who spent too much time at the block party on Saturday night, drinking and doing what I should not be doing. My marriage was a mess. We had two small children, and life was spiraling downward. Our next step was divorce. That was my reality. Now, please know as I searched, I spent a little time in churches from varying denominations trying to find my way. But everywhere I went, I was met with judgment. I knew that I didn't measure up. And the fine church people that I met, they were there to let me know that I really did not measure up. Now, I don't blame them for my journey. I know it's my journey. But you see, Jesus was angry one time, and he threw a few tables across the courtyard and those wonderful people. They grabbed onto that passage, holding it tight in their journey. So I do believe that they missed the big picture. As I watched from the outside looking in, it didn't take much to see that the church was even more messed up than me. And everywhere I looked, it was on the news, the radio, books, social media. The church was arguing about some theological doctrine. They were pointing fingers and they were telling each other, we got it all figured out, not you. Our way is the right way. Now, I'm sure there's no one here like that this morning, right? Hmm. Maybe a few. Friends, the ever-present disunity turned me away from Christians and from Jesus. There was no way you were going to get me to be a part of any church. Now, as an outsider, I began to wish that Jesus accepted people like me, broken and unhealthy people. I wish that Jesus lifted up love over theological doctrine. I wish that Jesus had just told everyone to love their neighbor. I wish Jesus would have encouraged those who follow him to unite in love. Do you ever wish that Jesus followers, us, that's us, the church, would just get this one thing right, that we would unite in love as a great witness to the world? Mm, I do. I believe if those of us who call ourselves Christ followers could unite in love, the world would be a vastly different place. Now, it wasn't until I opened a Bible, actually opened it up and read the book of John that I realized that Jesus did, in fact, he did accept broken people like me. Jesus did lift up love over correct belief. Jesus did tell his followers to love their neighbor. And Jesus even prayed for and encouraged people to unite in love. Imagine that. Now, looking at the church from the outside, I believe it was and still is difficult to see that Jesus called his followers to unite in love. Instead, we are known more for what we are against than what we are called to. For me, a man changed by Jesus, the disunity breaks my heart. And I hope, I hope that it breaks yours as well. Now, I may be speaking out of turn for your local pastors, but I believe, I believe they want to overcome the disunity as much as I do. I think holding this joint Sunday morning service, it's one step to show the world that we, Christ followers in the Monticello area, we want to point people to Jesus. Amen? Amen. 
Fortunately for us, unity is what Jesus prayed for. So listen again to what we read this morning and to what Jesus prayed for. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Friends, Jesus prayed that we would be united so that our witness to the world would be a living example of faith. If we are united, then the world will see and believe. That's great news. We should rejoice. If we were to unite as believers, people will see and believe and God's kingdom will expand here on earth if we look beyond our differences and unite. But we are human and we struggle deeply with uniting. We struggle with doctrine. We struggle with interpretation. We struggle with worship music. We struggle with one another. And Jesus knew that. So he prayed for us to be as one. And I am so glad. I am so glad that he did. Let's continue on a little bit in the passage that we read or that we heard earlier. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved me even as you have loved me. Of all the lessons we can draw from this verse, don't miss the important theme Unity matters to God. Why? Because the world will know God loves people just as God loves Jesus if, if we are united. Friends, the key to unity is love. How will the world believe that Jesus was sent by God? Not if we agree with each other on every theological point because we won't. Not if we solve every controversy because we won't. Not if we agree on a style of worship music because we won't. Not if we agree on which Bible translation is best because we won't. And not if we agree on the same political stance because we won't. But people will believe if we love one another United in love is how the world will see and believe that Jesus was sent by God. Friends, I love Peter. I identify with him so much and I'm grateful for his example. He's a guy that believed but often got things wrong on his journey. He usually mumbled something that was just the opposite of what Jesus was teaching him. Then there's Paul. I'm grateful for his evangelical heart. He recognized that Jesus' story was meant to be shared with all people across all nations. And without his evangelical spirit, we may not be talking about Jesus here this morning. And then there is John. To me, John is a wise elder who watched the story of Jesus unfold throughout his lifetime. He was there from the beginning with Jesus. And near the end of his life, John took time to reflect on the growth of the early church. He put ink to paper, if you will, and gave us a broader perspective that neither Peter nor Paul could offer. You see, John's writing is focused on the overriding command that Jesus taught, a command that supersedes all other commands, all the laws, all the theological doctrine comes down to one command, to love one another. Now let's look at what John wrote in chapter 13, verse 34, verses 34 and 35. That's what he wrote. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Some of you may be thinking, okay, pastor, that's really nice, but I think you're pulling one passage, pulling out one passage to support your message. (laughs) Maybe you're right, 
but I don't think so. I believe loving people is John's point when he talks about unity in the church. You see, when we read chapters 13 to 17, it's all part of a final teaching passed on by Jesus to his closest followers from John to us. And this teaching began with an intimate last meal and a personalized foot washing. And the culmination of Jesus' teaching is a prayer for us. And to me, this passage, this passage is a highlight of John's writing. This one command to love one another is carried throughout Jesus' final teaching. A teaching that we get to read about today. And the main point It is by love that all people will know that we are followers of Jesus. Let me say that again. It is by love that all people will know that we are followers of Jesus. Love. Not separation into denominations that bicker about correct belief. Love, not political stance. Love, not judgment. Love is a way to be identified as Jesus' followers. Christian love is people united in a common cause, engaging with the world, offering people an opportunity to see and believe in Jesus. Friends, the church uniting in love as a living, active witness to the world is John's overarching theme. If you think I'm still picking passages, let's see how this theme of love plays out in, his, in this teaching leading up to Jesus' prayer. If you want to pull out your Bibles, you're welcome to do that. I mean, we read from John 17, then we went to John 13, 34, and 35. Let's look at John 14, 15. If you love me, you will obey what I command. <laughs> if you love me, you will obey what I what I command, and my command is to love one another. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him. How about verse 23? If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Hmm. Again, love. How about chapter 15, verse 9? As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. Love. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Again, verse 17, this is my command. Love each other. Let's get back even to our reading today. Verse Chapter 17, verse 26. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Friends, Jesus wants us to love. He wants the same love that he has for God to be in us so that we know that God loves us just like he loves Jesus. Friends, uniting in love is not a concept in which we simply believe. It is not an aspiration we hope to attain. Uniting in love is an orientation, a command from Jesus that sets a course of our daily words, our actions, and our assumptions as Christ followers. And when we unite in love, when we live out the prayer that Jesus prayed for the church, I believe that we can become an unstoppable force in the world. Don't you want to become an unstoppable, spirit-led, loving force for Jesus? I do. And when we Live out love and quit worrying about the theology, the politics, the maskers or non-maskers, the vaccinators or non-vaccinators. I believe that we can change the world. And we change the world one person at a time, one family at a time, one community at a time, one nation at a time when we love people as Jesus loves us. 
These three simple yet powerful words unite in love. When intentionally lived will set the course of an entire world if we simply seek to live out and honor Jesus' prayer for us. How about we just get that one thing right, that one thing, and see what happens? Friends, I believe if we want to make a difference in this post-pandemic world that begins with God's church, that's you and me being united in love, I believe unity in love will be the key to our evangelical endeavor to reach our community and beyond. If we want our family, our friends, and our neighbors to see and believe, it begins with love. You see, love is what changed me from a struggling father and a drunk husband into a man of faith. Love is what redeemed and healed my marriage. Love is what transformed my life from a broken mess. Love is what calls me to be an active witness of Jesus Christ for my family, my friends, and my neighbors. I believe if love can change me, it can change you you. It can change our city. It can change our state. It can change our nation. And it certainly can change the world that we live in. Friends, my challenge to each of you this morning is to live out your love, to live out love in your life. Drop all the personal preference that keep, preferences that keep us from simply loving one another. Because loving one another is how the world will come to see and believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son. Amen.